explain the rationale behind this. Um, you had a success. You had success, of course, with your legal case compelling the government to legislate to trigger Article Fifty. Yes. What is it about the power of a prime minister to prorogue Parliament that, that you see a problem with? Well, the same legal team that um, won the Supreme Court um, for me uh, have come together. And we've been talking about this because the mooting of prorogation has been sort of, we forget it was actually Dominic Grab who brought it up in early June. And since then, we have been looking at this. And actually, we think that it's beyond the Prime Minister's powers because parliamentary sovereignty is actually the sort of jewel in the constitutional crown. And to bypass it, to close the doors of Parliament, we feel, from the advice and the case we've looked at, that uh, the case law we've looked at, that that would be beyond a prime minister's powers. It would be an abuse of his powers to close parliament, to get through or to, to not get through, to limit the voice of the representatives that we all elect. Convince people watching this morning that this isn't just you know, another Remainer attempt to thwart Brexit. I think in the environment we're in at the moment, everything is being made into a political football, and this is not. This is very much about defending the central core of our constitution, which is that Parliament is sovereign. And actually, everybody, including but, but especially Brexit, every, every Prime Minister has certain rights, certain oh, rights course, that they can, they including the ability to, to go to head to see the Queen and to end Parliament. They do, but in times of, of, of emergency, this time to actually do so for the express purpose of bypassing Parliament, to close the doors of Parliament and to limit the voice of our representatives, because we are a representative democracy, would be beyond those powers in our view. So our legal say, um, letter that went to the uh, Mr Johnson on Thursday was to say that if he became Prime Minister, that we believe that that would be beyond his powers. And also relying on the judgment in my case in 2017 where the Supreme Court expressly said that Parliament could not be bypassed. Do you think you've actually got a real chance of success at the Supreme Court, which is where this will end up, or are you just making, as much as anything else, a political point? It's absolutely not a political point because this case, as the first case, would actually not change the outcome of Brexit. All it would do is give Parliament the voice to shape how we exited or if we did. It would be up to Parliament to decide what it did. But the fact is, we cannot shut down Parliament. It is a central pillar of our constitution. I just wonder if we might just have a look. I mean, we've been thankfully grateful to you for giving us a, a look at the letter that you've sent uh, to, to Boris Johnson. I wonder if we just take a look at one line of it here. We request that you undertake not to advise Her Majesty the Queen, should you become Prime Minister, to prorogue Parliament without first providing seven days' notice uh, to our client. Don't go and see the Queen if you are Prime Minister and prorogue Parliament. I mean, there will be people watching this this morning going, who on earth do you think you are writing a letter like that to the man who most likely will be the next Prime Minister? Well, each of us in a democracy, each of us has the right as a citizen to exercise our power, uh, our legitimate questions of the courts. And that's what I did the first well, it's time. Quite, it's and quite something to write a letter to a former Foreign Secretary and tell mm -hmm. him, you know, if you become Prime Minister, you know, advise our client a week in advance if you're going to go and see the Queen. Well... Paying lip service to uh, parliamentary democracy is one thing, mm -hmm. but you actually have to actively defend it. And that's what this case and my legal team and I would be doing, is actively defending parliamentary sovereignty, because as I said, it is the cornerstone of our constitution. And to abuse that, nobody is above the law. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be a prime minister, you can be whatever your position, we would argue, I would argue, that no one is above the law. I mean, the one thing that you're not, of course, is an elected representative. Yeah. Have you been speaking to, I mean, amongst others, Sir John Major, obviously up in the Upper House now, but have you been speaking to John Major? Have you been speaking to any Conservative MPs? No, I've had no conversations. This is, uh, as I said, uh, when this question was being mooted or the prorogation question was being mooted back in June, I wrote an article then and my legal team and I have been talking, looking at the judgment in, if you like, Miller 1, the first case, and looking at that judgment and going over it and seeing that actually we do have a right to bring this into the not just the judgment in the case, but to fight to say that the Prime Minister wouldn't have this power. But I mean, isn't it fair to say that you are actually opposed to Brexit in all its forms, that this isn't about no deal Ultimately, this is a part, another part of a campaign from a certain part of the population who voted in a certain way to try and bring this process to a grinding halt, or at the very least slow it to the point that people start to say, as some already have, do you know what, can we just get back to the ordinary business of politics and making people's lives better for a while?
uh, your last statement in getting back to people's lives and making them better is absolutely where all of us want to be. But going back on your first two questions, the first is I would say that I have never been a fan of Brexit. I think any form of Brexit would diminish us as a country. Um, but that is completely separate. That is my personal view. That is completely different from defending the central pillar of our constitution. That is about the black and white letter of the law. And I have not spoken to any conservatives or anybody else or any other commentators. And if anyone wanted to join us, if we were to go to that stage, we would make absolutely, I would make absolutely certain that it was about the black and white letter of the law. There's nothing political in that letter. And we have not made this about Brexit. It is about giving Parliament its voice. That is something everybody in this country should be defending. I, I, I understand that, but what we're trying to do is kind of contextualise your, your, your personal views with the actions that you have been taking. I mean, do, do you honestly believe that if we left the European Union without a deal, that it would be impossible for the United Kingdom to recover from that? That actually we couldn't, as so many Brexiteers say time and time again, we couldn't be in a better position further down the road? I'm, I'm not interested in, in what is, is, is going and might be. I'm much more interested. I'm kind of interested no, no, no. no. I, I'm very though. much more interested in the reality of where we are. Mm -hmm. And the reality of where we are is that we have a hard deadline of the 31st of October. Mm -hmm. We have an extension that was agreed by our present Prime Minister, Mrs. May, with the EU, which uh, Section 2 of that says there is no renegotiation of the withdrawal agreement. There is no difference in the House of Commons. It looks like the maths. Actually, it, we've heard today it could have gotten worse because two members of the Conservative Party have said they would cross the floor um, in, in Boris's government. So right now, the, the, the problem I see is that through desperation, mm -hmm. it could be that a prime minister, the future prime minister, decides to prorogue parliament because there is nowhere else to go. Do, I mean, do you expect, accept any responsibility for for what we both kind of uh, characterise as the paralysis that's existed in government for a while. I mean, here on this show, Sophie and the team have reported on problems in housing that haven't been addressed, uh, education no, that haven't I been addressed. Agree with all no, of no, that. But, but, but what I'm suggesting is that yourself, the People's Vote campaign, you know, it's three I'm years not part of the People's no, Vote exactly, campaign. I've made, that's why okay. I made the distinction. Okay. But, you know, there's yourself, there's the People's Vote campaign. We are three years from the vote and it still hasn't been done. Do you accept any responsibility for the fact that the normal business of politics is not being carried out as it should be because of this focus on trying to get Brexit through in the face of opposition from people like yourself? Well, I'm not an elected representative, so I'm not in any way involved in the discussions that happen in Parliament. All I did with my case was give Parliament its rightful voice, and that's what I'm talking about again. But to have a conversation that's not a, making everything into a political football, as I said, is where we are as a free society. We are allowed to have opinions and debates. We're allowed to talk about our opinions without being shut down and without being abused. But those are very different when you look at it from bringing a legal case. The legal case is distinct from my view or other people's views. And I have to say, and, you, and I agree with everyone who says that we have been in three years of paralysis, and it is an absolute disgrace that we haven't been more um, focused in an outcome. And I personally put that down to the fact we still have politicians who are lying about what's going on. Uh, yes, no answer if you can. If there, was a, if there were a snap election, would you stand? No, absolutely not. Jane Bella, thanks for joining us.